Hey everyone, Ryan here, and this is going to be a little bit different than normal review of the 76280 Spider-Man vs. Sandman Final Battle. It has 347 pieces and costs $38, so we'll find out if it's worth $38, but also, this set is basically a DLC to the 76261 Spider-Man Final Battle from the summer of 2023. Why they didn't just release them at the exact same time, I don't know. But regardless, now in 2024, you'll be able to buy this set essentially as an add-on to that Spider-Man Final Battle set, or you may be looking at getting it as its own standalone set, but either way, we'll find out if it's worth that $38 price tag. Now, this one does have three figures with Lizard, Electro, and Spider-Man. Of these figures, Lizard is the one new unique figure for this set and he looks pretty good to me i do wish they could have done a little bit of printing in that waist area that is the attachment thing for his tail it does leave a bit of an awkward gap but i also understand why they can't and don't do that it just would be nice outside of that i like the figure and i love the facial expression that they gave him it's a good unique figure to have for this set now the other two figs in this one are reuses their accessories are a bit different from the statue of liberty set you'll see electro has downsized electricity pieces i assume they just did that so that it scaled better with the set that we have but the electro figure is otherwise good and this one will have a little bit less issue with falling over because of the weight on his back the spider-man here is also very high quality it's got dual molded legs and a 38 dollar set you don't see that all the time with licensed stuff it's got beautiful prints and it is the tom holland spider-man but in this set unlike the statue of liberty set they did not include the head to swap out don't really know why that wasn't done here like it was in the other set, but it's not. I think you have three high quality figures in this set that most people are going to be happy with on their own. However, if you are buying both sets, you're going to end up with duplicates, which is a little bit annoying. So before we attach Sandman here to the Statue of Liberty over there, we need to find out if Sandman on his own is any good. First things first, this thing's reasonably sizable. I wouldn't say $38 sizable, but for like a desk or shelf display, it's definitely gonna fit on nicely and it's not gonna look too small. Again, for the money, maybe not quite there, but for what you would expect for a build like this, definitely there. Now, the printed headpiece on Sandman is fantastic. It's an excellent detail, looks great, and the neck for him is completely poseable. So you can spin this however you'd like. I do wish this was sand colored underneath, but you'll have to let that go because it's just not. So when it comes to Sandman's hands, we have one large one here, and this one even has sticker detail on it. Now, the reason it's so large is because when you open it up, there's actually a stud inside, and that is made so that Spider-Man can actually be held inside of his hands and gripped. So it looks quite good with him in there. You can see like it's it's large enough where it actually makes sense versus the other hand on him, which is quite tiny in comparison. So two completely different hand designs, which may annoy some people, but I think makes a lot of sense when you think about why it is that way. The other way to use Spider-Man here is to attach him onto his web string. And once you have him attached, you can actually have him like running on Sandman like that maybe he's basically pulling down this yellow pillar here which is kind of cool now attached to that yellow pillar on a couple of clips is this orange portal looks very good matches the one that we see in the other set and you can actually attach a lizard onto this very nice clear uh, base here so you get a very nice base there and you can bend it a little bit so you can have him kind of move forward through it if you want which is kind of cool you can have him at different angles so i do really like that feature especially compared to what we see in the other set which is really nothing for that so a nice additional bit there and Electro does also have his own special spot on this set with that little stud at the front of the build a couple other notable things on Sandman the elbows are posable as are the shoulders you can see kind of the shoulder blade cover there um, actually moves and so you can push it back into place if you pop it out when you move the arm and then you want to move it back just something small you also have a fire extinguisher the scaffolding is quite nice the scaffolding that holds up Electro is built on nicely so you don't have to worry about it falling off even though it's at kind of an angle the other arm for Sandman is equally posable, both at the elbow and at the shoulder. And then you may notice Sandman kind of rotating about his base. And that is kind of another feature. You can move him slightly to the left, slightly to the right. The scaffolding gets in the way of him turning all too much. But it is something that you can do so that you can actually have uh, quite a variable display with the way that you want to pose Sandman. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. The last thing you got to know about Sandman on his own is that the base is quite similar to the Statue of Liberty, at least in the style. So I do like that they matched it up, although that definitely adds a bit of cost to the set that you might not want there, but it does also make it a nicer display piece on its own. So there's a lot of give and take there, I think. On its own, it's a pretty good set. I like it, but I wouldn't have gone out of my way to buy and review it if it weren't for its 
connection to the No Way Home Statue of Liberty set. So let's see that connection. In the instruction manual, it spells it out for you. It shows you exactly what you need to do. First, you need to pop the head off the Statue of Liberty, and inside, oh, is that a third style of Sandman hand? I'm not entirely sure why there's an entirely different style of hand inside of here. Regardless, we're removing that so that we can actually attach Sandman inside. Now to get Sandman off on his own, you'll have to detach anything from him. So you make sure he is on his own completely. And then you just kind of pull up at the torso and the whole thing should release there. And you can see that bottom of him is a little bit odd looking. It's not what you might expect underneath, but that is exactly what is going to allow us to connect to the Statue of Liberty set. Just in case you really needed to know, there's literally just some studs at the bottom. It's no like special connection or anything. So once you have your Sandman attached here, all you have to do is face this tile side to the front of the Statue of Liberty and then slide him into the only open two by two space in the middle. It's Somewhat obvious where it's supposed to go, but it's also a little bit difficult if you're not paying attention and you can have a lot of trouble with it like I did early on. Once he's attached, I found it's not necessarily the strongest attachment. You can still wiggle him out very, very easily, which is a pro or a con depending on your use case basically, but you can twist him oh so slightly. He still does have a little bit of torso turn. You're going to be able to get out of that, but it's not a ton. Honestly, he's basically facing to the left or to the right on your Statue of Liberty head. It's a very satisfying look atop that Statue of Liberty build and having attached everything on there, you can get a really good view for yourself and what you might think. I think it does kind of make it look even messier than the set may have been already. That set being the Statue of Liberty set. I think the Sandman set is pretty clean on its own, but but the Statue of Liberty with just so many figures and of course the added Sandman on top becomes quite ridiculous looking, but almost in a good way. I mean, it is representing that giant final battle and, and it does really good at that. Now, when it comes to whether or not I would buy the Sandman set on its own, I just don't think that's a great purchase unless you really want the Electro Spider-Man or Lizard figure at $38. You can get that except the lizard figure and much more with the Statue of Liberty for 110 bucks. Ultimately though, I think the obvious intention here from Lego is for you to buy them both. And I think that is a really good idea, just not especially for the Sandman at the full retail price of $38 or in total $148 for the package. I mean, a lot of the problem with this is that you end up with a lot of excess stuff here. All of this is just kind of wasted. There's nothing extra you can really do with these parts or figures other than maybe sell them if you want wanted to buy both sets and combine them and that was the way you wanted to display them forever like then you could maybe recoup some of that cost but I just think that it's a lot of money at nearly 150 bucks to get the complete package and at that a lot of that money is wasted because it's just extra stuff that's not actually used towards the thing you may have wanted. Ultimately I think the Sandman set is one of those rare sets where it's only really good if you buy it with its sister set. On its own it's fine it's like an 8 out of 10 but it's really elevated by the fact that it does have a set to pair with that is really good as well. If you decide you want to buy either of these, please use that built-in YouTube affiliate shopping program. It helps out the channel a ton and helps me make videos just like this. If you guys have any comments on either of these sets, leave them in the comments section below and you can check out more of my Lego Marvel set reviews on the end screen now.